Hello, everyone. Welcome to Touch Tank Tuesday. I hope you can all hear me okay. Today I am using my webcam uh, microphone, so hopefully you can hear me okay. But welcome to Touch Tank Tuesday. My name is Olivia, and I'm the education lead here at the Deep Bay Marine Field Station. We are an education and research facility that is part of Vancouver Island University, and we do as you might know, if you've seen before, we do uh, a lot of scientific research, but we also do education. A lot of our research focuses on shellfish and the marine environment uh, here locally where we are in Deep Bay. And our education kind of focuses on many things. It helps with communicating our research, but it also kind of focuses on all different types of marine issues and really to a wide range of people from adults all the way to kindergarten. Uh, yeah, but today, well, welcome. And today we will be talking about another critter in our touch tanks. And I did want to show you a little bit of what we have here, which is our new touch tanks. And I'll get out of the way but these are our new touch tanks that we recently put in. We've been working on them since uh, about February. Uh, so we're very happy to have all of our critters moved up to our main level, which is our education public area. Um, and so these will replace, if you've ever been here before, we had uh, round pools that were downstairs. This replaces that. And so it was a big move bringing all of our invertebrates upstairs. <laughs> uh, we still have to bring our anemones up. Uh, we had three different touch tanks and we're merging them all into this one new touch tank. Uh, so we still have to bring those anemones up, but otherwise we've moved most of our critters in. Uh, and today we will be talking about sea cucumbers. I know that we have talked about them in the past. We talked about California sea cucumbers, but there's another species that I wanted to talk to you about today called the white sea cucumber. And it's a type of burrowing sea cucumber that uh, lives in crevices. So you might not have seen it before, but there are tons of them out in the intertidal zone if you are looking close enough. Uh, they're really well hidden, but we'll be looking at those today. We'll actually be looking at them in our touch tank. So I will be moving you over there. Um, but first we will just talk about sea cucumbers in general, do a little refresher if you haven't seen our previous video. Uh, we will compare them with the California sea cucumber, that big red one that you might have seen before. Uh, and then we will talk specifically about our white sea cucumber. Uh, there are a variety of different white sea cucumbers. Uh, I'm not skilled enough to know which sea cucumber we have, partly because it's hidden, uh, but I will tell you a little bit about all the ones that it might be. <laughs> uh, and so as I go along, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box uh, or the comment section, and I will do my best to answer them. If I don't see them or if I can't answer them, because sometimes I don't know, uh, I will come back later to try and give you a good answer. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. So sea cucumbers are in that big phylum, you might remember, Echinodermata. So they're echinoderms. Echina, echina means spiky and then derms means skin. So if you've seen a cucumber before, a sea cucumber before, uh, you might have seen that they have spiky skin, as do its fellow members of the phylum Echinodermata, the sea urchin, uh, also the sand dollar, and the sea star. So those are all ones that we've talked about before. And they're all in that big phylum. Now that phylum is really big. When we talk about sea cucumbers, we're talking about a even smaller class and that gets broken down into even smaller groups. But we'll talk about just the class with sea cucumbers. And there are about 1400 different species of sea cucumber, which is amazing, it's so diverse. And uh, right here in the Pacific Northwest, there are many different species. In uh, my marine guide here, which is Marine Life of the Pacific Northwest, that I've borrowed from a colleague, uh, it's a fantastic resource. And just in this book, so what's in the Pacific Northwest, we have about 22 different species of sea cucumbers. And they can be of all different forms, all different shapes. Some of them are even free floating and uh, they're not what you would traditionally think are sea cucumber. When you think about sea cucumber, at least with what I think about them, I think that they are these long, like English cucumbers or what you might get in the grocery store because that is what they were named after. So this long critter, 
uh, that run, that will crawl across the sea floor. But some cucumbers don't look that way. And as we'll look at with the white sea cucumber, and you might have seen that I actually posted a picture previously on Facebook and even a video, um, you'll see that they don't really look like cucumbers. And some scientists and just people who are passionate about marine life say that they might they should be called sea pickles because they are so tiny. <laughs> so sea cucumbers can be quite small. They can go from about one centimeter all the way to 10 meters long. I've never seen one that is 10 meters long, but apparently some of the species can get to be that big. I don't think that the California cu cucumber or the white cucumber could get that big, but apparently there are some species that can. And sea cucumbers live along the sea floor, while most of them, as I said, some will uh, be free floating in the water column. So they'll live across the sea floor and they'll crawl with their tiny tube feet. They can scavenge by eating off the sea floor, or some of them are filter feeders, so they will actually eat in the water column, which is quite cool. Um, before we go and take a look at the sea cucumbers that we have today, I'll talk a little bit about their body shape. So they have that pentaradial, so easier to see it with the C star here. So the pentaradial, sim, pentaradial symmetry, and what that means is just five rays. So five ways around. So they are symmetrical in five directions. So easy to see on the C star, you have five radiating from the center. For sea cucumbers, they look a lot like sea urchins if they were pulled this way. So they're actually being pulled where you have... Um, so this is where excrement comes out. So this is the anus of the sea urchin. This is the mouth of the sea urchin. And so if you pulled it long, you would have the mouth on one side as a sea cucumber has, uh, then excrement would come out the other side. Um, and they have again, that five-way symmetry. So that five-way symmetry happens along the long axis of the body. So that's why it's a little bit different than this rounded sea urchin. It also doesn't have those really sharp spikes either. It does have different types of spikes and it has tube feet. So they are very, very similar and a little bit different as well. Uh, so they have that five-way five symmetry all the way around and they're elongated. Um, and they can live, depending on the species, they'll either live in the intertidal zone, so that area that's covered by water and then uncovered by water because of the tides, or they'll live out in our subtidal zone, so that's the area that's really just deeper than the tide goes <laughs> all the way out into the ocean. So they can live in many different places. Um, the white sea cucumber that we're going to see today, it lives mostly in the middle of the intertidal zone. So if you look between rocks in the intertidal zone, all the way into the subtidal zone, so a little bit deeper. I'm not sure how deep it goes though. And this species, along with many sea cucumber species, prefer rocky areas. And that's because of the tube feet. So those little suction cup feet that they have on the bottoms of their bodies. And those suction cups, they would get gritty with sand if they're walking on sand all the time. So what they, what they do is they live in rocky areas. And especially with this white sea cucumber that tends to hide, uh, it's good for it to live in rocky areas because it has more options of places to live and hide. Okay, so let's go over to the touch tank and I'll show you the California sea cucumber and I'll also show you the white sea cucumber. You can kind of compare them a little bit. Um, and if you have any questions, put them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer. So let's head on over and you'll get a good view of our new touch tanks. So we have this shallow area right here. So the front section of the touch tank is shallow like this. So really good for touching. And then any of those critters that like it a little bit deeper, a little bit rockier, we have in this one, it's a little murky right now, uh, but you can find the sea stars in our deep tank. So shallow tank has everything else <laughs> because our sea stars love to eat. So they are crazy about eating our um, critters here. And that's why we separate them and they, we put them in a different place. So if we had too many sea stars here, then unfortunately they would eat everything that lives here, which is not good. So you can see there's a little bit of reflection here, but you could actually see right under me here is the California sea cucumber. That is our little red one here. And so I'll pick it up and show you. So this is our sea cucumber here. You can see this is the red sea cucumber, well, California 
giant sea cucumber. They all have many different names in addition to their species. Uh, and you can see it's very soft, it's very squishy. They do have on the inside a skeleton made out of calcium carbonate. That calcium carbonate's just like that uh, urchin shell that you looked at over there, um, and it helps to protect them. So it gives them a lot of protection. When we moved them upstairs, unfortunately, they're really scared, they're really disturbed by being moved to their new home. And they did something that I'd never seen before, but is known about sea cucumbers. I'm just gonna put it back in the water to uh, make it feel a little bit safe. It's well known about sea cucumbers is that they will actually expel their guts. So they'll send all of their guts, their internal organs out to try and scare predators. And uh, it's a really cool mechanism. They, if they're stressed out or scared, that's what they do. But then they grow back their organs. So when we did move them, we saw that some of them were scared and they actually did expel some of their organs, but none of them are permanently hurt. They're all doing quite well right now after the move. So that is our California sea cucumber. I'll pick up another one because I don't want them all to be scared. And I'll just show you underneath. Here are the tube feet. So there are five rows of these tiny little suction cup feet. These suction cups help them to crawl. You'll also see as I'm holding it, it's starting to tense its muscles. It has five rows of muscles that go all the way around its body in that five-way symmetry. And those muscles are what people like to eat. So a lot of people, um, I think particularly in Asia, they like to eat it dried. Um, so I have not personally ate a <laughs> sea cucumber before, um, but apparently it has good muscles. Um, and this is its mouth right here. From its mouth, uh, it has this branch of tentacles, this branch of tentacles helps it to eat. So it eats algae as it goes along the sea floor and really anything it comes in contact with that it likes. And that's for the California sea cucumber. But uh, actually the white sea cucumber is quite a bit different. And so I'm going to move our camera so that you can see it. I can't pick it up out of the water because it's not as cool really to see. Yeah, uh, and uh, Lisa said, no tasty cuke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I personally do not want to try it, but there is quite a big number of like sustainable farms for farming sea cucumbers and also harvesting sea cucumbers, which is pretty neat. Um, so it seems like a sustainable op um, option relative to some other seafood, but yeah, I've never tried it. So I'm going to move the camera for you to see, and you'll probably hear my voice move since we're using that. <laughs> um, but if you can see right here on our left, there's these tiny little tentacles that are coming up out of the rocks. Um, I will position it a little bit better for you. There we go. So you can see there are these white branches and there's a white center there. So the center is its mouth. The branches are actually for feeding. So there are these tentacles that come out of its mouth. And what it does is actually suspension feed. And by suspension feeding, it basically sits and waits for its food to come to it. And so this sea cucumber is patiently waiting for the algae to come through the water. And once it has enough, so it's filtering it out of the water, once it has enough, it'll actually take one big branch of its tentacles and it will put it into its mouth to pull the algae off. So it looks like it's just feeding itself. So it doesn't look like it's gotten enough yet. I'll try and get you closer without putting you in the water. There we go. So that's a good view right there. And it hasn't put any of its tentacles in its mouth just yet. Oh, it's moving one. I don't think you can see it there, but it's just put one tentacle in its mouth. I'm waiting for it to pull it back out, but this is basically the way that it functions. So this is the way it eats. It's a really cool way of eating. Let's see if it does it again. It's just moving one of its tentacles around. Um, oh, you did see it. Fantastic. Okay, so it's moving them in, it's moving them out, and so that's how it feeds. It's a little bit different than the California sea cucumber because the California sea cucumber um, rather than suspension feed, like it's doing right now, like the white cucumber is doing, um, it actually will use, it will crawl around and it will take that algae off of the bottom of like the tank, off of different rocks. And you know what? 
Um, amazingly, I have found another of these white sea cucumbers, but it's actually out to show you its body. So I'm going to move over here. This is a fantastic opportunity. Great timing by the sea cucumber. And so here you go. So this is the body of the sea cucumber. Let's see if it'll focus. So this tiny little worm that, yes, looks more like a pickle than a cucumber uh, is the white sea cucumber. Let's see if we can get it to focus. But uh, it looks very hairy. It looks like it has hairs, but that's its two feet. Um, and so this is the exact same cucumber that you just saw, but you only saw its feeding tentacles. And so this is its body. So it's moving around. It's trying to find a better place to live. So it is quite small. I will just point it out here. I'll give it, I'll touch it here. So it's quite small and delicate. And there are five different species. There is the white sea cucumber. There is, uh, I think there is the false. So the false white sea cucumber. Um, and there's a pale sea cucumber, and there's one more species I know that all look really, really similar. So it could be any of those. I think this is the white sea cucumber, um, but there are many different ones. And they can be both male and, or they have male individuals and female individuals. And the way they spawn is through broadcast spawning. So they will shoot those sperm and eggs into the water column. They will be fertilized and they'll turn into a free floating larvae. So that free floating larvae uh, will just move in the water column and it'll go through a bunch of different transformations. There are actually a couple transformations it goes through to get that five way symmetry. Um, and once they grow big enough and they change to really look like a sea cucumber, that's when they settle onto the sea floor in what's hopefully a perfect habitat for it. So we have a question here, do they grow as large as the red one? Very good question, thank you. Um, so no, they don't. Uh, the white sea cucumber will only go as large as 10 centimeters. So that is pretty large compared to what we have here. So right now it looks like it's maybe four centimeters. So it'll get just over twice its size at its largest. Because of the size of our tank, maybe it won't grow as big, um, but it definitely won't be as big around and it won't be as long as an adult red sea cucumber. And I'll move this over so you can see the red sea cucumber. Oops. Hopefully see the red sea cucumber. Uh, right there. Okay, right now, if you can see the mouth is closest to us, so closest to the bottom of the screen, and it's opened its mouth and it's using its tentacles to scrape along the bottom of the, of the uh, tanks, so on that rock there to eat algae. So it also has all of these tentacles that are really, really cool, and sometimes they bring them up to the, to the surface of the water, but they haven't now. Um, but they have all those tentacles and they actually use them to eat off the bottom of the sea floor rather than the white sea cucumber that uses its tentacles as kind of a suspension feed, really just a net to catch algae. So it's quite different. And you can see right beside it, we have the red sea urchin, which is quite big as well. And we've talked about previously, we've got lots of critters in here. So this white one, oh, you can see it's actually moved. Ah, and that is much better focused. So there you go. So that is the white sea cucumber. And it's out of focus again, but that's okay. So that's that white sea cucumber again, and it is quite small, um, especially when you touch it here. And you can see it's kind of interacting with a, oops, sorry, with a sea urchin. There's a tiny little green urchin beside it which you can kind of see there. Okay, so I'm gonna move us back over. All right, so that is basically it for our sea cucumber. I hope I answered all of your questions about them. Uh, if you have any more questions after our session today, I'm happy to answer them in the comment section for you. Um, so these are all the critters that we have, and hopefully we'll have a new one for you next week as well. Thank you so much for joining us, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Goodbye.